Welcome to the fifth chapter of the course of Propensity Score Matching Approach using Stata. The name of the chapter is Reviewing the Problems of Linear Probability Model and the Advantage of Logit and Probit Models. My name is John Riveros and this is an initiative of MMS Resource Shop. Contents of the chapter We are going to review a Stata comparison between the Linear Probability Model and the Maximum Likelihood Models of the Logit and the Probit Approximation. We are going to see a demonstration of the adjusted probabilities to estimate it by probit and logit model, which is going to directly be related to the treatment effect model, right? Alright, once we have opened Stata, we are going to load other database, right? In this case, we are going to use a database which is related to a program which seeks to expand the reading in Colombia, right? This was a national program and we are just using the database related to a specific area called El Valle, which is a region in Colombia, right? So the basic idea of the program was to test with a reading test the score of the individuals, right? In order that we can improve their individual reading skills. So, we got a set of variables and we are not just going to describe this because Stata will drop the whole display in. But the thing that we should consider is just the, the summary which is given us by each variable and also the whole content of the database, right? So, in this case, um, Muni refers to a variable called municipios but since we're just focusing on El Valle, we're not going to need the, mo the rest of the municipios, right? Which is a categorical definition of a territorial unit, right? And we got a set of variables and we got the description right here. And they are in Spanish because in Colombia people speak Spanish. But uh, the nice thing about this database is that it was performed from the National Department of Planning in Colombia, right? So this database is just made for this whole purpose of analyzing the treatment effect of the public program, right? Which is was a national level, I repeat, but we're just focusing on El Valle, right? So uh, according to the chapter, we're going to see a basic review of the problems that we got when we are using the linear probability model, right? Which is usually done by ordinary least square estimation. <laughs> So I'm just going to describe here, I'm going to look, excuse me, for the treatment variable, right? And the nice thing is that this database, um, it was done with a discrimination of the treatment dummy variable, right? The people from the National Department of Planning just did it this way. And if we look for the word grupo, which is in, in English group, we're going to refer to the treatment dummy variable, right? So I'm just going to tap this in order to ensure it, and we can see that it has two possible outcomes with the respected um, tags, right? The treatment tag and the control tag. And I'm going to confirm that the null label refers just to zeros and ones. Yes, exactly, perfect. So um, I'm going to rename this variable in order to make it easier to understand. And now the variable is renamed, right? So if we describe this variable, uh, and also this whole database was done just for uh, 2018, right? But uh, it was after the post intervention, so the treatment was given already. And in this case, we can see that 4,380 observations we got, and the mean tends to show a pretty equal relationship between the frequencies of the zeros or the one. It's a little bit closer to the zero, but nothing significant, I should say. Now, um, for example, I want just to use another variable and in order to demonstrate what it's, a pr what it's the problem related to the linear probability model, which is estim estimated by ordinary least squares, right? So I'm just using the dependent variable as the treatment domain variable, which is going to help us to model the treatment participation. And I want to include the, um, for example, the income, right? Which in Spanish is ingresos. And I'm going to use it this, right? So I'm going to regress this just using this variable in order to demonstrate this whole purpose of the 
problem that relates to the linear approximation of the probabilities, right? So in this case, uh, we got a significant variable which relates to the income by groups. Uh, I should say that the income variable is categorized by different types or, or income levels, right? So I'm just going to tap it there, and we can see that there are some values this refer to Colombian pesos, right? Lesser than 140 Colombian pesos, between 140 and 300, 315, and so on, right? And we can see that the most of the frequency are related between 700 and 1 million pesos, right? This is usually the minimum salary that works in Colombia, right? So, I'm going just to re-estimate again the linear probability model, right? Remember that the dependent variable given by the t variable is between, it's equal 0 or equal 1, right? Just two possible outcomes of this one. And this one is a categorical one with a serious lots of levels, right? We could try to delete this last level, which, which is um, related to no answer, no response. And this would benefit the approximation that we have done, right? But if we want to delete this value, uh, these values, excuse me, from the variable, uh, we're going to use the no no level com no level command, right? In this case, uh, we can see that the nine level it's going to equal for that no answer, no response, right? So I'm just going to drop all observations if that variable equals 9. Alright, now we got just all the values which report all the observations that report income, excuse me. So getting back to the linear probability model, we can see that there is signif statistical significance and a 5%. Um, we can see that also that the R square is really little, so we should scatter this in order to see what kind of distribution it, it has. It should be really little, right? Analysis as supposed, since the dependent variable is just one and zero, there's no clear association between these. That's why the R square is just uh, so little, right? And the significance has changed a bit of the observation we drop, but it's still significant at a five percent. This the current variance. Um, now we can see that the coefficient is 0 0.01, right? So by increasing the income respected to each level. Uh, we got a um, probability that the, the treatment was given of 0.1%, right? So the from for um, point so 1.6 percent, excuse me. So it's not very clear the relationship we got, and if we predict the results using XB command, which predicts is the general command after post estimations of the regression models. XB is going to be the linear uh, prediction of those of those model, and all this is just simply the name that I'm giving to the prediction, right? So, I, if I scatter this, the OLS and the dependent variable, we can see that there is a straight line, right? There's a pretty straight line that um, it's not going to help us in the uh, analysis. So the problem is that this straight line, it can be goes further as the income just goes and um, has a higher value, right? And the thing is that sometimes this coefficient doesn't take the probability between 0 and 1, right? So sometimes when you estimate uh, multiple regressions with dependent variable between 0 and 1, the problem is that the coefficients have a straight line which refers to the marginal effect. And the problem is that the expected probability is going to surpass the one value. And if a probability surpasses the one value, it's not going to be any more a probability. So that's the main issue with the linear prediction. If we use to predict the, to estimate the treatment participation model in the normal regression ordinary least squares technique, right? So now, if we're going to regret this, for example regret this using the probit model or better just the logit model as a start we can see that there is some interaction related to the log likelihood 
because a maximization function has been um, started, right? So basically there's a set of interactions that fit the model in order to accurately establish the coefficient. However, this coefficient is pointless to interpret except for the sign, right? In this case, we just got a positive sign to interpret the impact of this variable related to the income and the treatment participation, right? So the pseudo square is not really a good measure of the fit of the model, um, but you should check important things like the chi square statistic. Uh, we can see that we reject the null hypothesis that the overall model equals zero. So we accept that the model it's different, significantly different from zero. The, the number of observation is also good because in maximum likelihood context we need a full set of observations in order that the estimator doesn't get inconsistent. And all right, um, I want to check the error criterion just to make a possible differentiation between the profit model and the logit model. And now I'm going just to use the profit command, right? And you can see that the significance of the value has not changed a lot. And the coefficient is also somewhat different. But remember, this coefficient is pointless to interpret. You just got to interpret the sign. And how you can interpret the sign, actually, from this first approximation? You can say that if the average of, you can say, that the value of the income increases, there is an increase of the probability of being participant of the treatment. Right? That's the single interpretation you can give. So, you can see that the basic interpretation is general. Um, the constant is not usually interpreted. But you just can define it as there is an existing probability since the p-value is significant associated to the treatment participation, right? Which is independent of the income part, uh, vari variable, right? So the main idea is just that, that as the income increases, there's a probability of being participant of the treatment. This is not a determination model, uh, as the handbook of impact evaluation said, right? This is just going to be our form to approximately establish the participation of the program related to some coordinates, right? So it's a good idea that you just only include in your model participation just the significant variables, right? And now I'm just going to predict again the Akai Kambajasin criterion. And you can see that it's somewhat different, right? So we got 5,685 and it changes on the decimals from 109 to 0 and 97. And the also the Bayesian criterion is somewhat lesser in the private model. So we can use this criterion just to say that the better model is going to be the private estimation, right? And I want you to check out some of the options that the probit model has to offer, right? So I'm, I'm just going to predict a model, uh, the predicted probabilities with using peer command, right? Just to keep that in mind. And I'm going to use a, a special command here in the regression, including to the dependent variable, which is categorical. So I'm going to place the i dot part in the regression, right? This is going to generate the variables for each of the um, values, right? Since we saw up there that the values of the dependent variable related to the income are categorical and are between intervals of the income, right? So what this command will do, the i dot associated to a variable, it's that it's going to generate for each of the more uh, intervals in this case a dummy variable right so we can see that the first it's not going to be statistical significance so it's probably going to get dropped but we're going to leave it there and so on the rest of the intervals are statistical significant to relate uh, that are related excuse me to the treatment dummy variable right which refers in ultimately to the treatment participation so um, I'm going to calculate the margins I'm going to include this, our dependent variable, with the absence of the i dot command, right? 
and what will th what will this do? This is going to estimate the marginal effects uh, that are related to our probability model estimation. And also, if we let it, let it like this, it's going to be at means, right, of each variable. So uh, I'm just going to put it here, and then I'm going to predict it with the at means command part, right? So we can see that the margins are still the same, and each in if we just leave it like that and or establish it the only difference is that it's going to give us the mean of each of the categorical dummies that were generated to our income variable so, and also it gives us a p-value related to the margin that we have just estimated right in this case uh, we can only just type margins plot and we can see that the Adjusted predictions related to the predicted probability of being part of the treatment effect related to the income variable, it's going to be non-linear, right? This is adjusted, of course, and we can see a straight line over here, but it stops to be a straight line about this point. So this is the biggest advantage of the linear probability of the probit model related to the linear probability model. And if you want to edit this part and compare and to share both of the match related to the linear probability model or the probability regression or logic regression, you just can't uh, save the command here, like tap, type in save, right? And if you want to edit, you can also do it. For example, I don't like this label to be really, really big. So I'm just going to reduce it. And in that order of ideas, the, the real issue is that sometimes you're just going to need some comparison results, right, between all the models that you're going to estimate and the probabilities adjusted to. Um, but the basic idea is simple. We can see the according that is also similar to the result of the linear estimation with what's a straight line over here. We can see that the predictions of being participant of the treatment is going to tendly increase at some point of the of the income level right it's going to decrease at this point this is the plus of the of the profit model and we can see that the average is going to establish it by this right the average impact of the each status of the independent variable which is the income variable related to the predicted probabilities right so this is big, the big differences among the linear probability model and the probit estimations. If we grab the logit estimations, uh, we can see that there's not going to be a big difference. So I'm just going to keep it like that. I'm going to include the i dot command, right? So in this case of idea, we got some significant, insignificant coefficient, just like the first. And I'm going to include margins and also or independent variable right and we can see that all margins are going to be significant and then we can perform the margins plot which is going to give us the adjusted prediction so we can see that there's no big of a change related for the logit model and the probit model right so i wanted to keep in mind this when you're modeling your treatment participation right where always the dependent variable is going to keep this uh, the dummy variable, right? And you can include the regressors. That should be in average accordingly with means to the treatment and control groups. Thank you very much. This was a video of MMS Resource Hub. And my name is John Riveros. See you in the next chapter.